OK。Okay, let's get a start. Hello, everyone. I'm Chen from VMware. I'm a, a hub maintainer and I'm a host of this community uh, meeting. Uh, this is today's agenda. And uh, uh, first, uh, we will we'll introduce the Hubble version 1.8.1 uh, data we released last week. And the second, uh, we will introduce uh, uh, Hubble v1.9 plan and uh, next we'll uh, introduce some upcoming community events and uh, then we'll, in, we'll uh, do a feature demo uh, of the new feature in the developing uh, developed and last of uh, in today's session is uh, discuss anything about Hubble. Okay, um, uh, in the last week, we uh, released the Hubble v1.8.1 uh, in this release, we fixed uh, some no issues, uh, which is no in v1.8.0. And uh, work on uh, and this you, you work on to download and try it uh, on the Hubble's uh, GitHub repo. And uh, if you encounter some problems, feel free to open issue to us. Well, we'll fix it uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, uh, after a long discussing of, uh, of uh, the features in 1.9 uh, the the planning is the plan is finished last week uh, let's work on uh, Mike Michael to uh, introduce the final uh, features in the uh, v1.9 hello Michael hi everybody uh, how are you um, so, so yeah, um, it's, uh, we, we had a lot of time after Cubicon to kind of prioritize some of the features that we want to address for 1.9, um, including the timeline for 1.9 and the list that we came up with that addresses a lot of the issues that our customers are seeing and things that we want to implement to advance the vision of Harbor are the following. We're going to implement quotas on a per project basis so that customers and users will be able to add an upper boundary for uh, size and number of images. Um, we will implement a retention policy so that you will be able to define how, much, how long you want to keep certain images um, in, in your repositories and in your projects. And more importantly, we're going to give you some flexibility in terms of the policy and the engine that you're going to get to define for retention. Actually, in fact, last night, uh, the maintainers uh, of Harbor uh, had a big discussion on retention policy, and, um, and we're going to continue on that discussion as we finalize both the user experience um, and the capabilities in this area. If you guys remember, Zach, Zach uh, Nathan Lowe had uh, some good uh, implementation and ideas on our retention. So he's on vacation now. So when he's back, we'll uh, sync with him and kind of finalize that. Uh, Webhook was something that we wanted to implement before. Uh, we're going to end up doing that now. 
And for webhooks, we're gonna go down the path of a minimal viable product. Initially, we're gonna support only one webhook per project. And more importantly, we will only have webhooks around um, the containers, images, uh, push, pull, delete, and then Helm charge, push, pull, delete, as well as CVE scanning. Those are the only three areas that we're gonna have webhooks today. Uh, we're gonna use them to get feedback back from the community and advance those uh, in subsequent releases of Harbor. Uh, the white list in CVE, uh, that's a feature that will allow us to uh, exclude certain CVEs from policy so that if a new CVE came out and uh, that it has not had a chance to be patched, we don't wanna prevent images from getting pulled. The syslog endpoint is gonna allow us to uh, push the logs from Harbor into syslog capable uh, providers. I think of this as being able to push your logs to Splunk or uh, Elk or FluentD or other tools that can support syslog. We're obviously gonna improve replication to add more providers and their replication working group is working hard at that. And the last but not least, that is uh, the repository beyond images and home charts. We're only gonna do the groundwork there to start thinking about what do we need to do to support things like Kubernetes operators and Synapse bundles and other things in Harbor. So that work is more investigation and proof of concept now. And in the future, we're gonna target into, uh, into production. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is our goal for Harbor 1.8 is to release sometime at the end of August. So um, that is the proposal for our release, uh, the 28th of August. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, okay, ne uh, next uh, uh, is the upcoming community event. Uh, you know, in the June 20th and the June 26th, uh, KubeCon China will host in Shanghai. And also, Hubble have four sessions in the KubeCon. Mm, uh, the first is Sense of China or originated project community reception. And this is in June 24th. And th this is hosted by Hubble and Dragonfly and PyKV. Uh, welcome to join the reception. And uh, there is a lightning talk about the new Helm chat installation experience with visual and the repeatable approach, uh, which is uh, a president, president by Stephen Zhou, which is a co-maintainer in Hubble. Uh, all about Hubble by Stephen uh, th this station is by Steven Zhou and Wen Kai um, in the June 25th. And the last is upgrade images by digging out and automatically fixing the vulnerability uh, vulnerabilities. And uh, which is uh, the speaker is Yan and uh, Steven Zhou, which is uh, in the June 26th. Welcome to attend the session. Uh, the sessions. Uh, oh, oh, there is one thing to mention is that in the July and the August, uh, uh, the Hubble community meetings will invite, uh, in each community meeting will, will invite one or two Hubble users to sharing their experience and uh, their user case of Hubble in their company and in production environment. Uh, so in the, if you wanna, uh, uh, learn something uh, or to know something other people how to use in Hubble in their environments you can join the meet, uh, community meeting in July and August okay uh, uh, the, uh, if, if you don't mind I, I want to say one one more thing as well um, so now that we have uh, Cubicon Shanghai happening next week um, it's also the right amount of time to uh, submit sessions for the next Cubicon in the United States in San Diego in November. So it's very important if any of you have ideas around uh, sessions that want, you want to submit 
or um, you did a specific use cases on terms of how you're using Harbor in your organization, we'd love to hear from you. You can pick me, ping me in private uh, on Slack, or you can, um, or, or basically you can uh, send me a message on on uh, Twitter. Uh, I'd love to work with you to identify a session that you want to submit, and even we can co-present with you. Uh, but the important thing is we want to we want to have users of Harbor to speak up, talk about the benefits of Harbor, talk about the frustrations, your experience around managing and running a private registry. So I think that it will be very valuable to other users at, at Cubicon in the United States, and you have a very good chance of getting your session accepted. Thank you. Well, thank you, Michael. Um, so what, uh, one more thing I want to add is that uh, if you have any, uh, you, if you want to share your use cases with other people, uh, with the community members, you can, you're also welcome to contact us so that you can be uh, sharing your cases in one of our subsequent community meeting in July or August, or maybe in September and October, depending on the on the on the schedule. But but anyone is welcome uh, to share their use cases uh, of Harbor. So everyone is welcome. So please contact us if you you're interested in sharing. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Henry. Okay. Uh, and this is uh, the feature demo session and uh, let's work on. Uh, yeah, uh, engineer from Wemmerwell, uh, he will uh, demo as the robot account pull and the push. Hello, Yan. Hi, um, I'm just here to Okay. Hi, can you see my screen? Yeah, okay. Uh, so actually, uh, today I will demo you how to use a rubber count to do hand push and uh, pull. So the original request was from the community. So one guy filed an issue to ask team to add an option to allow a rubber user to do the hand pull and push. He also gave us a mock UI. So we believe that, that uh, it is the reasonable uh, requirement. So we decided to add it into the 1.9. So today, and uh, the development work is almost done and already more into the master branch. And today I will demo you how to uh, ground the rubber account to do hand pull and push. Yeah. I have already set up a harbor. Uh, so let's try to uh, new a uh, rubber account. And we ground it. Give a name demo. So we ground it with ham char push and ham char put. Okay, let's copy the token. Mm. Let me share the okay. Um in the help have clan, I have already add my harbor into the helm repo list. So we can see here. Uh, my repo is here. So let's try to use the rubber count to push my Local ham into harbor. Now we ha I have a Redis ham chart in my local file system. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to copy the token. Let me try to do it one more time. Okay, 
Oh, sorry. Uh, here I want to push with the robot demo and the password is the token was generated by Harbor and try to push my local Redis into my repo. The repo is the Harbor library. Okay, stop. Uh, let's go back to Harbor to try to uh, try to verify it. Okay, the Redis uh, is already in Harbor. And then let's try to do the ham fetch. Uh, I want to use the rubber count to fetch a ham chart from Harbor. Um, let me search it firstly. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have a Maria DB in my repo, so let's try to fetch it with the rubber count. Yes, yeah, done. So let's just try to verify from the local. Here, here's the helm that fetched by the rubber car. So that's my demo. Any question about it? Yeah, can you switch back to the UI? I think the sequence of the chat process should be adjusted. I think the, the, the important thing I want to stress here is that how uh, responsive we were to some of the customer feedback. So, so we had a user that asked for home chart abilities in the robot accounts, and we yep. were able to very easily go back and address it very quickly for our users. So uh, thank you, and that's a great job. Yeah, we will re revise the UI design about the the words to make it more clarify. Okay, this is my demo chain. Okay, hello, this is uh, I will demo the replication. Uh, let me show my desktop. Hello, can you see my desktop? Yes. Okay. Yes. Welcome, Zimin. Uh, Zimin is a uh, uh, hello is an engineer from um very well. Uh, uh, they will demo as the um, new the more providers of the application endpoints. Uh, hello, Zimin. Yes. Okay. I'm very glad to show this demo. Uh, here, uh, as you know, uh, I will I will show uh, I will introduce to a newer new replication adapter. AWS ECR and uh, Google GCR. As you know, uh, currently uh, in Hubble, uh, we just uh, support uh, below drivers, Hubble, Docker Hub, uh, Docker Registry, and the Huawei Registry. Now, first, I will uh, show you the AWS ECR. Uh, first, as you know, 
first I will uh, introduce some feature I have uh, intro I have created for for this. Mm. You can see the difference is uh, first uh, we we support the new provider here and uh, we introduce the new uh, URL endpoint uh, selector here and uh, we need to use AWS AK as the credential and uh, this driver also support uh, bypass the certification very verified. Here I also have a uh, I also set up a hubble. Um, first uh, you can oh, could you could you switch to the English uh, interface? Oh sorry sorry I I can't uh, Zumi, I think there is a drop down list you can see oh. for English on the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. You, oh, sorry. Yeah. My, my, my environment is Chinese, so uh, I can't. You can, you can switch, switch from the drop down list top yeah. right. Yes. Oh, oh, here, here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First, you can create a new registry endpoint. Here, you can select. Uh, the AWS ECR. Uh, okay, here ECR. Okay, and the endpoint URL. I have. Uh, I have. Uh, in, I have put all regions here, so you can just select. Or if you use all the UI, you can just uh, input the correct uh, URL. For example, I. And her AP node is, which is Japanese, Jap Japan. And here I input the, the ID. The, the, the AK ID is from uh, ECR. You can create it from here. Uh, I think my my network is very slow. Okay. Okay. I think uh, you should know how to create uh, uh, the AWS AK. Here, I will enter the AWS AK, and you can test the connection. As you see, it is successfully. Uh, if you uh, mistake it, it will, it will fail to pin the endpoint. Okay. Then we can create a replication rule. Here I will create two replication rule. One is the pull based one, and another will be pull based. Uh, first, uh, you can see I have. I have pushed up uh, a image in my hubble, which is uh, under project to push. The name is uh, demo one. So push, and uh, here I will replication to ECR. Uh, here I will save it. Okay. As you see, here is to push, and uh, let me change the proxy. Uh, Okay, anyway, uh, let me just, just trigger this, uh, this job. Here you can see the job is, is running. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, sorry. I don't think you you know the. You switch back to the yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I think you you you're using a wrong name. Uh, you you can edit the policy. policy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, oh, sorry, sorry. This is this is it. Yeah. Let me trigger it again. Oh, here you can see one image is the same replication, and the log is here. It is showing. Um, the image is the replicate here, and it is the replicate. It is that, uh, but I still can't can I show you the AWS website. Okay, um, here I will try create another ECR pro. You have already named a policy with ether pro. Oh, sorry. Push. Okay. Yeah, actually, oh, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. I, I, Go to. Wrong. Uh, uh, if, if I can't open this, uh, let me let me try use the commander line. Uh, okay, here, here I would like to push an image to AWS ECR. You have to switch your share screen. Because why? Oh, sorry. Uh, share screen. How to switch it? Yeah, we cannot see your terminal. Uh, okay. 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 Yeah, I, just, I just push a uh, a Docker image to ECR here. Okay, it it is under namespace to pull uh, name demo two. Okay, um, let me switch back. Uh, mm. Here, it will replicate the demo tool to our hover. You can see it is already copied to local hover. And uh, from the project, you can see the, the new project to test with the new image demo tool. Okay, uh, this, is, this is for the AWS. AWS ECR, and then I will show you the Google GCR. Uh, it's mostly uh, similar, uh, but uh, some different in UI is uh, first, uh, the endpoint is just uh, uh, list four, list four uh, URL endpoint. And the, the second is uh, Google Google GCR have to use a JSON file uh, as the secret. Uh, because I I still can't uh, log in to Google Google Cloud. Um, if if you can log in to Google Cloud, uh, you can create a service account. Uh, 
with storage admin role and uh, create a create a JSON JSON security here. I have I have created one before, so I just uh, demo directly. Here I will input uh, my input my 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 JSON file. It is just likely. Mm, uh, let me up uh, here. Uh, the the JSON field is just like something like this, uh, and you can just uh, copy this, copy this into into here. Okay, so let's test the connection. Okay, it's connect successful. Uh, if we change some some key, for example here, it should fail. Okay, save it. Uh, we also create uh, two replication rules. JCR push. Mm. push. Here, the namespace has a limitation. Uh, we have to input the pro uh, GCR project ID as a prefix. Um, here, my my JSON token is using the project uh, this this one using this project ID. So I need to put it here. Then you can uh, add other namespace uh, such as uh, to test push here. If you don't uh, prefix the project ID, it will fail to to replication. And if you input a wrong uh, wrong project ID, it will also fail. Okay, let's trigger the replication. Okay, as you can see, uh, it is uh, it is copy it is replicated to the GCR. Uh, because uh, I already uh, pushed it uh, before, so so the so the blob is uh, seen already exists, but the manifest is uh, okay. Okay, they they are they are all skips. Um, but actually, um, in my previous test, it will uh, it will do really replication. Okay. Uh, let's create another. Pull, pull drop. Is it so bad? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think you need to yeah. worry about it. That's a bug yeah. on your one. Yeah, let, let, let me try it first. Whether can Oh, not this. Uh, I think I think the the namespace I input is not correct. Uh, anyway, I I you can see my previous. Uh, I think you can use. Uh, Namespace you just pushed to the GCR just now. Oh, okay. In your last all of the push. Oh. 
Here should be to push a uh, two and child. Uh, two. Okay. Here you can see uh, they have replicated uh, the image from namespace to pro demo four into our Hubble. Here you can see two. That's about two. two. Right, here, demo four. Okay, uh, that's all. That's all. Awesome. Thank, thank, thank you. Also, awesome. great job. Okay. 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 Okay, let's go to the next session. Uh, you have any questions you can discuss here? Any question here? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to have a quick discussion about the user configuration API. Yeah, please go ahead. So pre 1.8, it was quite simple. Uh, we could use environment variables or config file to set, uh, you know, remote user authentication to UAA or uh, whatever. Um, post 1.8, um, it's quite painful to work with the configuration API. Uh, and it makes it very difficult for the, uh, the new users. Automate. Uh, the uh, the project has a long one. So, so uh, Hey guys, if you're not talking, can you please mute so we can hear Paul, please? Thank you. So, you know, we use the Helm chart to stand up Harbor, and then we need to throw a bunch of curl commands to actually configure uh, the rest of it. And that's been quite painful and error prone um, and so it would be good to have go back to having an option to do it via config file or environment variable uh, as well as that um, i don't know of any tools currently that will like easily integrate with that the config api especially without a cli um, so i feel like there's not really an easy way whether we're using helm or using something like console to store values of actually getting those values into the config API. You know, everything understands how to write a, con write a config file and restart a service um, natively, because that's how everything's been done, whereas nothing really understands how to do that by the config API. Uh, but yeah, by, by the API. Um, so yeah. Now first, let me... Um... Explain why why do <laughs> yeah the better first let me explain why we do this because we um currently when each of harbor it's you have I mean before one dot there are two ways to configure harbor. First is you can you know configure it as you did via environment variable or configuration file. The other is um, there'll be uh, the UI console or API. Um, um, we found that problematic because when user um, do some uh, update of the configuration via UI, and uh, if they up, you know, restart the VM or or somehow restart Harbor, and the latest change they make will be overwritten by the uh, configuration file or whatever bootstrap script they use. Um, and because the change user makes on the UI or API will not be uh, reflected in the configuration file. So that's why we, we, we had to you know, make the decision that um, we uh, categorize the configurations into two areas. One, a user can 
only set via configuration file or environment variable, and the other part they have to uh, configure via API or UI. So that's why uh, you're seeing the issue. But for this particular problem, I think somehow you can, or maybe we can, for Helm chart, we can add something in the pod template in the, uh, I, I think there's a life cycle, life cycle uh, attribute to support that or, or the other way around. If we uh, want to allow user to set a uh, configuration uh, via environment variable as before, we will need to, you know, make them uh, read only uh, on API or UI. Yeah, so I, I've seen people solve it by um, if a config has been set via config or environment variable, then it gets grayed out in the UI um, and doesn't let you change it. Um, and that way you kind of get that protection, um, but you also get the flexibility if someone wants to configure it by, by the API or by the UI. If they don't set it by the config file, then they can always uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's part of one solution. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, it, maybe we can work together to write a proposal and see if that, we yeah. can squeeze okay. that in, in 1.9. Yeah, the, the other alternative would be, I think, if we had a decent uh, config API CLI, um, that we, and just make sure it's item potent, uh, and then uh, we could then use, as you kind of said, like a lifecycle, uh, like a post install hook in Helm, uh, to run that CLI. Um, I, I just feel that the um, just running curl commands is pretty fragile and it's hard to detect errors and deal with those errors. Yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, yeah, I, I think I, I have to admit that's an uh, issue. And uh, could you write up an issue um, on our repo and uh, collect? like thumb up icon via the community users. And uh, if, if you see if, you know, it's a quite common issue and uh, you have got a lot of support, probably we should, uh, you know, okay. spend some time to work that out in one on my time frame. All right, so just create an issue in the main Harbor repo? Yes, yes. Right. I know you're a Helm chart user, but yeah, I know uh, other people I mean, the Harbor repo is more popular. So if you want to collect the thumb up, that's maybe a better place. Yep. Yeah, I'll do that. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's it for today, right? Yeah, I think that uh, another question about the permission management. He been pushing to just guest. So he been, what does that mean? Uh, what about your question? Uh, you can tell me more about it, I don't understand. You can speak in Chinese. Xiangxi 那个因为我们团队在用这个哈伯然后我们现在主要是想对于权限管理这块是否能够加强一下就是有一些人有一些角色只能进行破有一些角色只能进行破然后有一些只能看项目有哪些项目有哪些资源或者有哪些project有哪
就是想有一个。你可以自定义的，我的所所有角色，我可以进行，就是所有的菜单或者是所有的按钮，我可以。也就是说，有一堆 action list for position。哎，对对对对对对。可以啊，这个确实，这这是另外一个体系。嗯嗯，对。不过你可以，也就是像刚刚我说的，你可以提个。嗯，提一手。OK。一些 track 什么，可能在很短这个时间内是没办法 support 的。嗯，因为因为我们相对来说是一个金融公司嘛，他们对于权限管理还是很严格的。对。哦，这个确实啊，了解。嗯，确实跟这和我们现在 Airbag 属<笑>属于这个，我感觉是一个更更更复杂的一个体系，类似 RM 这种。嗯，对。可以先把呃先把你们需求先提出来，就比如说你们细化到什么样的这个这个 role。呃，需要什么样的 role 和 access，、嗯、然后我们看一下，这个是不是有可能可以在某些区形式的实现吧？或者我们先讨可以大家好讨论一下。嗯，好 ，OK OK， 好，谢谢。哎，再顺便问一下，就是说之前的时候，我记得关注入社区里面会，就是说我们 Harbor 和 Dragonfly 做了一个这个，这叫什么？直接公开？对对对，那个那个需求是什么时候发版本？呃。啊，还是这个情况，就是说和 Dragonfly 之前已经做了一些这种，呃，就是说相当于一些实验吧，但是只是现在用 Formalize、嗯。那在 1.9 里边仍然是局限于我们的 Result Limitation， 还是不能 Formalize 的话、嗯，就是正式化，还是局限在，可能停留在那个之前的那个，啊，类似于实验版上。那可能在 1.9 之后看会，如果有 Result 足够的话，可以考虑。把它加进因为因为像这一块我们公司内部也自己做了一个，就是跟他的一个这个，就是就是融合了一下，用做主要是用那个 PVP 嘛。嗯，对对对对，然后然后我们自己给那个方案，当然就是我们自己就是一家测，那个虽然也已经已经上线了，但是希望还是能看到社区的那个那个，看一下公司是怎么样的。对，那要这样吧，你。呃，有什么？我们线下聊一下吧。之前那个我们做、嗯，我就说我们跟他做的场景叫 Pure Heat，、嗯、就相当于说对对对，我有有看过，上一次有一个那个分享有看到。丹宝说啊，你看过，大概是那个情况，就是一个 Pure Heat， 从 h a r b o r 直接可以下发到他的 Cache 里边、嗯，然后他从那边就可以开始 P 的 P 的 Pull， 嗯，就是这个情况，也就做做到这个程度。我不知道你们和他的集成是是还有别的吗？没有问题了，好，谢谢。好、哦，啊、哦，我就说、就是、线下在、嗯、，I think we can discuss offline。嗯、哦、，OK OK。啊，你在那个在那个 Harbor 群里吗？嗯，我在一个 Harbor 开箱呃开源项目群的二。啊，行吧，那到时候你呃我 at 一下你吧。嗯嗯。我想了解一下你那个集成的情况，好吧？嗯，好好好,好，行，谢谢。嗯。Any questions? Well, I, we're way past time, so I think we need to、uh, kind of start closing down the meeting.、Um, and maybe in the future, we can、uh, put time boundaries on demos, so we can stay on our thirty-minute biweekly meeting times time some as well. I just you know so that all community members can probably allocate for the time. But、uh, today was excellent.、Uh, thank you, Ziming, for、uh, doing a great job、uh, driving the meeting. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh,、uh, thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you next time. Bye bye.